Let me remind you uh, where we started this uh, section on image understanding. Uh, we started by saying that there are going to be three types of um, learning or image understanding uh, techniques that we are going to develop. There's the super lot, supervised learning regression. We've seen a number of those. We've seen least squares. We've seen weighted least squares. We've seen total least squares. And then we saw a series of different iterative least squares, steepest descent, conjugate descent, and gradient descent. All of them have one thing in common, which is they have some inputs, they have some models, they have an objective function, and they have an optimization to try to predict a real valued um, uh, classification given some inputs. And now what we're going to do is transition to the second type of supervised learning, um, where we now have discrete class labels. So think uh, recognize a person from their face. Think recognize a digit or a character from a scanned document, where now it's, is this a, a, the letter A, the letter B, or the letter C? Common to both of these will be this notion of supervised learning. There's this training set. We tell you what the class labels are or what the regression values are. You have to learn model parameters and then apply that into the future. And with this type of supervised learning, we're going to have the same game. We're going to have some model. We're going to have some objective function, and we're going to have to minimize that objective function. It's just that we are going to insist that we have these discrete labeled outputs. So let's look at a simple toy example here where I have two classes um, characterized by two features, feature A and feature B. Now, what could these be? Well, let's say this is a medical diagnosis, and A is your red blood cell count, and B is your white blood cell count. I know nothing about biology or medicine. I have no idea if that makes any sense at all, but it doesn't matter. And you have two categorizations, let's say healthy and let's say unhealthy, for example. So I'll have the output here be Y equals one for healthy and the output here Y equals zero for unhealthy. Um, this could be any of a different things. It could be two image features that you extracted, the magnitude of the gradient and the orientation of the gradient. And I wanna know, is this a face or is it not a face, for example? So A and B are the features that I extract from my data. Um, y equals one and Y equals zero are the labels that I associate with my data. And here, just for clarity, I've color coded them so we can see what they are. And obviously this is a toy example, so they're very nice and cleanly delineated from each other. So how do we do classification? Well, what's the game we wanna play? Now, we wanna learn some relationship between A and B that predicts y equals one or y equals zero. And so I could think about this as a regression problem. I mean, it's not quite the way to think about it, but I'm gonna do that because it's going to lead to a more proper way to think about this in terms of class labels. So let's, let's say we didn't know anything else. Let's say the only thing we knew are these uh, supervised learning regression models and we were tasked with this. Well, here's maybe a way we would approach this problem. I would like to predict y and because I want to use least squares and I don't want to do something messy, I'm going to assume that I have some linear model in my two things that I estimate, um, A and B. And here's a linear model. I'm going to say that Y is going to be predicted from a linear combination of A and B multiplied by two unknown scale factors, W1 and W2. Those are the model parameters, of course. And then maybe some constant term, W0. This should look pretty similar. This looks very similar to what we were doing with line fitting, but I'm not doing line fitting. I'm not trying to fit a line through this data. That's not what I want. I want to be able to predict a label, Y equals one or Y equals zero from the inputs. And I have arbitrarily said, not entirely arbitrarily, but I've said that here's my model and I've made it a linear model so that I can use a least squares or a total least squares or an iterative least squares or a weighted least squares. All right, let's see what that's going to look like as an exercise to remind us how uh, least squares works. So here's my model. Um, what's now, what's next? Now that we have a model and we have some data, well, let's write out the objective function and let's minimize it. We know what to do now. So let's write out the um, objective function. We want to minimize the square of the difference between uh, the predicted label and what the uh, model tells us. Well, we know how to do that. We have W0 plus W1A1 plus W2B1 uh, uh, should be equal to Y1. 
next row of this matrix. W0, that's the constant term, plus W1A1 plus W2B2 is equal to Y2. And so this should look really familiar. I have a matrix of things that I have in my measurements. I have a vector of unknowns. Before, that was the slope and the intercept or the parameters of a parabola. And then, of course, I have a vector of my known labels. Here's the supervised per, uh, uh, version of this. These are known labels. I know these Ys here associated with each of these data points. And, of course, I know all the As and Bs. And notice here, I've packed in everything. Right? I haven't distinguished here between... In this equation, what's y equals 1 and y equals 0? But of course, some of these will have a y equals 1, and some of them will have y equals 0. I'm packing in everything into this one matrix to try to predict y from a1, b1, a... Uh, oops, that's a typo. That should be an a2 right there. Apologize for that. All right, so how do we solve this now? Well, I have a uh, matrix x with all of my data in it. I have an unknown vector w. And I have a vector y over here of knowns. And I'm going to now set up a quadratic error function that says, please minimize for me the square of the dif difference between these. So I have xw, which of course is just the vector that results from multiplying an n by 3 matrix times an, a 3 by 1 vector. That's going to give me an n by 1 vector minus this n by 1 vector. So that's a vector right there, vector norm, squ uh, square everything and sum and then take the square of that. So now we have exactly what we've always had before. We have a quadratic error function that corresponds to, a, in this case, a hyperparaboloid because we're in three dimensions over here. And now we're going to minimize. How? Well, differentiate, set equal to zero, and solve. We know how to do this. We've done this a couple of times now. So let's go ahead and do it. So I'm going to differentiate my error function. That's going to give me two x transpose xw minus y. w, of course, being the unknown. Set that equal to zero. Uh, 2 goes away because we can divide by 2 because we have a 0 on the other side. I've got x transpose xw is equal to x transpose y multiplying through by x transpose. And then, of course, w is just x transpose x inverse times x transpose y. And I have a model. I have a model of coefficients that will uh, predict a y value, class label, from the inputs a and b. And it has been trained on this label data. And now I can take any new data point with any new value of a and b, feed it into the model that I just estimated the parameters of, and I have a predictor. Well, let's see what this looks like. All right, I'm going to import some libraries here as usual. I'm going to have 20 data points. You see them over here. And I'm going to create the positive class as a bunch of random numbers um, in two space. So think about this as the a, b terms. So uh, rand. Um, n of them, and then I'm generating both the a and the b values. And then just because I want a clean separation between the two classes, I'm going to set the x value to just be the negative of those, and that's why you see this kind of symmetry here. So the, the red points are the positive class, and the blue points are the negative class. And you can see that they've been separated. One is positive, one is negative. Just a toy example of data. I need some labels. So now that's my a and b, if you will. Think of these axes here as A and B. I need labels. Let's call the Y uh, label 1 and the, sorry, the positive uh, class, the, the red class uh, label 1, and the other one uh, uh, 0. Could have been 1, negative 1. It doesn't really matter at this point, whatever you want your label to be. And now I want to do the least square. So let's do a little bit of work. I need this uh, vector of zeros, uh, of ones rather, that's going to be O. And let me build an X matrix that has my X positive values and my X negative values. Those are all the, 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 the parameters of the, uh, the data here. And then Y, of course, are my labels here. Um, and now I've packed everything together into one big matrix. I've got the uh, the, co the, the coordinates of the positive labels on top and the coordinates of the negative uh, labels on the bottom. I've got the labels for the positive on top and the labels for the positive on the bottom. And that's what I've done here when I've stacked them vertically here. All right, so that's that big matrix with all the data and all the class labels. All right, and I'm just going to go ahead and plot everything to make sure I've got everything uh, working right. So that's this right here. All right, let's go ahead and do the least squares now. So. Let's build the big matrix here. I've got the uh, 0, 
one, and then ones. So that's A, B, one. I flip the, the, the one. So instead of being in the first column, it's in the last column. Um, so that's my big X matrix. My Y vectors with the class labels was already there from before. And here's my least squares. I've got M transpose M, M transpose Y, um, and I've got my least squares estimator U, which now has three parameters. What multiplies the horizontal coordinate, what multiplies the vertical coordinate, and then that constant offset term. All right, and now I have a model. I can predict things. So what is my prediction? So take the zeroth and the first coordinate of the positive labels that you see here and multiply it by u sub zero, u sub one, and then add u sub two. That was the, what the model was. Take, the, uh, take the, the horizontal coordinate, multiply it by the first model parameter. Take the vertical coordinate, multiply it by the second model parameter, and then add the third model parameter. And then the predicted y is over here. Same thing, I've got the x negative, uh, x negative, and then the constant term here. So these are my predictions. And then I can plot to see how well I did. How well did I predict the labels? And they look something like this. Now remember, I'm not trying to fit a line, so I don't have to draw a line through that. What I'm trying to do is figure out what are the labels. I wanted all the red points to have a label of one, and all the blue points to have a label of zero. Could have been negative one, it doesn't matter. It sort of worked. Um, I mean, there's some things that go from a little bit more than 1.2 down to 0.6, and these things go from, say, 0.4 down to minus 0.2. So it sort of worked. I didn't really predict a label. Why? Well, I did regression, right? There was nothing in that classifier that said your numbers have to be one or zero. It said, please try to predict a floating point, a real value from these things. And it sort of worked. I mean, this isn't terrible. What could I have done now? I could put a threshold at, say, 0.5 and say anything greater than 0.5 is class one, and anything less than 0.5 is class zero. And you know, it sort of works. It's a little weird though, and it's a little weird because I've sort of changed the problem. I started off with, I have these discrete class labels, one, zero. And then I framed it as a regression problem, which generated a floating point, a real value, between what? Well, I don't even know between what. It could have been a big negative number to a big positive number because I don't have control over that model. But it gives you some intuition as to how we might start to approach this classification problem. It's the same game. We need a model, we need, not, we need an objective function, and we need to minimize it. And what we're gonna start to look at are different ways of doing this that respect that notion of a discrete class, and we'll pick that up when we come back.